Hey everyone, welcome back to Life is Love School. Today's topic is the six mindsets that will dramatically speed up your healing process. Who doesn't want to feel better, get better faster? So today I'm gonna to show you the six mindsets that have helped me, have helped all my clients, and I think it will help you as well. If you are new to this channel, make sure you like, you subscribe so you don't miss anything. Now let's get to it. Number one is self-reflect. This is our ultimate power because none of us have full control over anything that's happening in our lives. In fact, some of the worst things that happen to us, whether it's having parents that are toxic or uh, you know, having natural disaster, health issues, people that we care about dying, those are not in our control. But what is always in our control is how we respond to it. A lot of my private clients come to me because they've had a slew of relationships with different people, but they all have similar patterns. And this is usually when people start to say, hmm, that's interesting. How come I always date people that are narcissistic? How come I'm always the rescuer? How come I'm always picking up wet kittens? How come, right? If it's one time you might think, oh, I just got really unlucky twice. Maybe it's still unlucky. Like, three or more times, I probably have something to do with it. So I wanted to kind of go through a poem that I think speaks to this really well. I'm going to butcher a little bit, but just from my understanding, and I'll link the actual poem in the show notes so that you can review it in its entirety. But this lady talks about her healing journey. She said, chapter one is I walk down a road, there is a huge hole, I fall into the hole, man, it hurts. I almost didn't get out, I struggled, I feel like shit. Chapter number two is, I walk down a road, there is a hole, I took a peek at it, oh my God, I still fell in, and it took me forever to get out, it's not my fault, how did I get so unlucky? Chapter three is, I'm walking down a road, there is this hole, and you know, this time I decided to go around it, and the final chapter of this person's healing journey is, I took a different road. Right? I hope that you can get to that final chapter as soon as possible, but that requires you to recognize your role in this. So there's gonna be negative people all around the world. There's gonna be bigots all around the world. There's gonna be wet kittens walking around everywhere, narcissistic people hanging out everywhere, but we don't have to pick them up, right? If we're constantly engaging with these people, there's something about how we choose these people that is bringing them into our lives and that we're keeping them around. So if you can figure that out, you will not repeat the pattern. And that's absolutely crucial. So to recognize your role in this, not to blame you, but you have the control over who you allow, what circumstances you allow in your life. And if you're seeing the same pattern over and over again, it's time to look deeper. Now, mindset number two is you can get almost anything out of your life if you're willing to delay gratification. One thing that childhood trauma does to a lot of people is it makes it less likely for a person to want to delay gratification. Because why? Let's say that your, your parents are toxic and so one day, for some reason, your father said, hey, I'm gonna take you out for ice cream. You can either, we can go now or we can go you know, later in the day. You're gonna say now, right? Because your father's promises are not constant. It might go away later when he doesn't feel like it. So you are gonna go now. You're gonna, you're gonna take that stuff that you can get now, right? So that translates to not saving money. I have some money, I wanna spend it now, right? Instead of saving it for later, which compound interest rate is very powerful and I'm constantly hearing um, people that, I, that uh, are in my group or my clients saying, there are things that I wish I did earlier that would make my life today so much easier, right? Look at all the things that you could do today. Maybe a small sacrifice today, right? Maybe you prefer to watch Netflix, but you know that going for a walk is better for you. So you go for that walk. Or maybe um, you, know, you want to land in a different job, and in order to do that, you have to spend a few years taking community college classes or you know, getting a degree. That takes effort. I prefer to party on the weekends, but because I want to do this career later in my life, I have to make some sacrifices and study today. So remember that it takes a little sacrifice now in order to get to somewhere that you want to go. And it's true for everybody. There is no free lunch is what people mean by this. 
And while you're doing this, remember that you hold the vision, you keep going in that direction and keep adding things that help you get to that direction. Let's say that you would like to get healthier, lower your blood pressure, maybe even lose a few pounds. There are gonna be days where you ate too much ice cream, right? Don't focus on that. Take your eyes away from that. It's sort of like if I'm riding a bike, I'm not gonna keep looking at obstacles because if I keep looking at obstacles, I will bump into that car, I'm gonna bump into the sideways. I'm going to look at towards where I wanna go, right? That's the same for anything. If my goal is to get healthier, I wanna work out more, I count the days where I went for a walk. I count the days when I went to the gym. I pat myself on the back. I give myself extra, extra credit for doing those things. And I let the cookie that I ate that I probably shouldn't have eaten, I let that go. I add fruits and I add vegetables. Eventually all that good stuff is going to squeeze out all the things that I don't want to do. It happens naturally. So don't focus on things you don't want because the more you look at it, the harder it is to resist. So don't look at it. Focus on where you want to go and keep putting one foot in front of another. Point number three is most people don't care about you. This is a well-researched phenomenon where we feel like there is a spotlight on our forehead. So it's called a spotlight effect. I walk into a room, I'm all nervous. I'm no longer enjoying the party because I'm thinking everybody's looking at me, what I'm wearing, you know, looking at my body, uh, you know, am I talking right? Am I being judged? That takes a fun out of life. And it also makes us very afraid to fail because anytime we try something new, the chances of failing is high for anybody. So if we put all that pressure on us thinking that we're some kind of movie star and everybody's watching my every move, I'm never going to put myself out there. I'm never going to try to learn how to dance because you're not going to look good when you first start, right? It's true for everybody. How do we learn how to walk? We learn by falling down and we recalibrate, we try again, we fall again, we recalibrate. No baby is worried about how clumsy they look when they start walking. I want you to remember that and give yourself that grace and recognize that everybody else is so busy feeling that spotlight on their own head, they have no time to worry about you. How freeing is that? Point number five is do not expect anyone to read your mind. If you grew up in a family where parents are immature, it's unlikely they taught you how to communicate. So one of the common patterns I see with people that grew up in that environment is they don't communicate. We just assume, right? We look at a person, they furl their brow at us, they must be angry at us. Well, how do we know? What if they had a terrible day? Maybe they're thinking about something that frustrates them and they furl their brow and has nothing to do with us. And now we walk around thinking that they hate us. In order to get ourselves out of this funk, get into the habit of asking questions, right? Just, hey, um, did I do something that upset you? I saw that you furled your brows. And this person then can proceed to tell you what's going on in their world. And then you can decide, do you believe them, do you not believe them, etc. Along these lines, I also want you to recognize that if you grew up in a toxic environment since childhood, more likely than not, your worldview kind of tends to lean on the, the negative because you were right, right? If your parents were furrowing their brows, they probably feel really upset and then you're about to get something bad happen in your life. But now that you're in the real world where most people are, are nice and they furrow their brows, most likely it's not about you. So don't make it about you. Don't assume the worst, ask questions. The last point in point number six is super important. It's zooming out. So have the attitude of, yeah, something bad may happen. So not so long ago, a few days ago, um, my cat woke me up at four. That's after a couple days of her doing that. And then uh, I didn't get enough sleep. So I was like, I'm still, go I'm still gonna go to the gym. I went to the gym on my way. I almost got into an accident. It's sort of like just one bad thing after another kept adding up. I can allow the situation to escalate where I get increasingly frustrated. I make more and more mistake and everything just goes downhill from there. Or I can take a moment, do some deep breathing, ideally even journal if I could, but to recognize that, you know, is this bad day really that bad? Or, you know, would it matter tomorrow? Would it matter five years from now, 10 years from now? How about when I'm 80? And oftentimes I ask myself, would this matter when I'm 80? If it doesn't, then let me see if I can let go of it now. And also, if I'm about to make a choice in my life, you know, do I stay in this job? 
or do I do something else? You know, do I marry this person or do I move on? I consult my 80 year old self and I put myself as best I can in my older body and say, you know, would I wish that I chose this way or that way? And I'd go for that, right? I try to take the long view in life because life is long. You want to make a decision that optimizes for yourself for the long term. So I hope you find today's content helpful. You matter to me. I really want to hear from you. Drop a comment. I read every single one. I respond to every single one. And then make sure to check out the show notes as well. I'm going to list that poem that I just, I think you're going to absolutely love as well as other useful resources. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful week.